How would you feel if eight years into your relationship, your partner's family still thought the two of you were just roommates? Well, on today's case, Mr. Clements says he is sick and tired of being kept in the closet and the amount of attention Mr. Sparks is directing toward miscellaneous women. Mr. Clements says he has reached a breaking point and he's here today to tell Mr. Sparks that he will no longer be his secret lover or a pawn in twisted games. Ooh, am I intrigued. Let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Clemens versus Sparks. Thank you very much, Mr. Clemens, Mr. Sparks. Mr. Clemens, you are here with an ultimatum for your partner of eight years, Mr. Sparks. You say if he is not willing to commit to you and your relationship, you will have no choice but to walk away for good. Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Sparks, you say you want to save your relationship and you need Mr. Clemens to stop claiming you are not committed to him and work on the relationship. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, I have two gentlemen before me, two handsome sirs that are here. There's no reason for y'all to not be having a good time. Let's figure out what the problem is. Why are we in court today, Mr. Clemens? I'm here because eight years I've been with this man. I love him dearly, um, but I just can't tolerate the attitude, the mouth, the keeping me a secret. I just can't do it anymore. It's like, why are we here at this point, eight years in? We should be somewhere married, somewhere happy. So it's like, what, what are we doing? What are we doing? Yeah. Okay, Mr. Sparks, what are we doing? Your Honor, I just want to fix my relationship. I do want to get married, and I do want to have a family, but we will not make it to that place if the... Toxic, toxicity keep being the way it is, and if he feel like I'm hiding him from my family, I'm not doing that. Okay, we're in court today, so we are certainly not hiding anything right now. <laughs> That's the first thing that I can legitimately tell you, that we are not hiding anything. And let me start off with that real question. Mr. Clemens, do you love Mr. Sparks? I love him dearly. Mr. Sparks, do you love Mr. Clemens? Of course, always. Okay, so we walked in the door with there's love between us. Why don't you tell me how you all met and then what led us to this place where we are today? Uh, we met eight years ago at a friend's party. Uh, when I got there, he was already, like, engaged with another man at the party. This is what I assumed. But uh, the whole night of the party, we just kept glancing at each other, kept smiling at each other. So I'm like, if he here with him, why he uh, engaging in, in this with me, you know? So later on, uh, my friend that I had came to the party with, he was leaving, but he had, like, connected us and, like, had us exchange numbers or whatever. Uh, later on, about like an hour or two after, we did our little one-two, and then after that, it just turned into a relationship. Well, I, di I didn't think it was gonna go there, but I told him that night, I said, after we, like, met each other that day, I knew he was gonna be mine. Mr. Sparks, um, did you all start off, um, with roses and daisies, as Mr. Clements is saying, or was it rocky? Talk to me. I want to figure out what the foundation of the relationship was. In my eyes, we were both single. We were mingling. We were just, we we're in a dating stage. Oh, you were not solely committed no, at that right. point. You all were romancing each other. Yes, in my eyes, that's what I thought we were. Like, you, like he said in his eyes, we were already in a relationship from the first night. After I said, and I told him that I, I don't want a relationship right now. We can be friends with benefits. We can just, you know, date. We was in a committed relationship the next day after we slept, slept with each other. Okay, so, Mr. <laughs> Clemens, that was your perception of the relationship. Yes. However, we got to a point where both of you agreed on that. Am yes. I right? Yes. Okay. So, talk to me a little bit about what makes you think um, that he is insecure. Why do you think Mr. Sparks is insecure? I threw him a bir uh, party for his 24th birthday. We had a gathering, invited uh, some family and friends through. One of the uh, family members, yeah, one of the family members who I consider family had came and he was leaving. So I told BJ, like, I'm about to walk him down. So we, we walk in, in front of the hotel. We go to the car, smoke for like 10 minutes. He's upstairs claiming that he's calling my phone back to back. So when, when I get out the car and I walk back to the uh, main entrance of the lobby, he's standing outside. So I'm like, what's up? Like, what you, what's going on? You, you didn't see me calling your phone? Calling my phone in. So I pulled my phone out and show him, like, my phone have not rung not once. Oh, you, you was just in a car performing with that man. I said, what? Mind you, this is somebody I consider my actual family because I've grew up with this man. What happened? Your Honor, could I please tell my side? Because it just, it, it was a weird situation. He told me he was going downstairs to walk the, the his family member downstairs. When you walk somebody downstairs, that takes five to 10 minutes. It don't take an hour and a half. Now, that is correct. So, when I go, after a certain time, like, I'm, I'm having fun with my friends, we drinking. So, after, like, 30 minutes, 
30, 45 minutes, I'm like, okay, drunk. Where's, where's Lante? Me and my friend, we go downstairs. Mind you, he claimed that he was walking him downstairs. Me and my friend were in front of the hotel the, and for like at least 15 minutes looking for him. I'm calling the phone, calling the phone, calling the phone. I probably called that phone over 100 times, Your Honor. About another 30, 45 minutes passed by. Out of nowhere, here he comes, like Houdini. He just <laughs> jump out, boom. Him and the guy is walking towards him. I'm, so I'm asking my where have you been? Like, I've been calling your phone. You ain't been calling me, you ain't been calling me. Yes, I have, I've been calling you. So his pants unzip. You don't got no answer why your pants is open? Like, what's going on? Okay, here's my question. Were you doing something nefarious no. as Mr. Sparks was worried? Why, why would I cheat on him on his birthday, first of all? I don't know, because there can be some people that do crazy Thank stuff you. now. I do know my, that. That's, that's never been me. It's never been my character, and I would not be in a relationship. Are you a cheater? No, never been. Yeah. Okay, Mrs. Sparks, why you put your head to the side? Because, you know, whenever somebody does that, that usually means, mm-hmm. I mean, he just, he got some, he got some cheater tendencies. He has some ways. He has done some things that I have questioned. He has been sneaky from in his phone and, I mean, like, from texting people or, or Instagram or stuff like that with people on the phone, but then he had deleted. But, like, on Snapchat, um, when, you, when you save a message and you delete it and you go back to that person's name, the whole thread comes back up. So I'm telling he, you, technology will put you it on will full put blast. You, all red flags are there. So now I'm going back to you, Mr. Clemens. Um, you are thinking that <laughs> Mr. Sparks is being overly insecure. Overly insecure, for no reason. Um, but it usually happens in a relationship that you try to make your partner feel more comfortable. Yes. Um, if he... If Mr. Sparks is concerned, um, why would you put yourself in a position that it would make him concerned, is what my question is, sir. I don't think I put him in situations that make him concerned. I think he just really, like, over-exaggerating, overthink. He's always been this way, probably before me, um, from past relationships that he's been in. I, hey, I, I just don't know. In the apartment, uh, our, the bedroom was right here, the office is right here. So the rooms are connected, they're joined. So I'm in the room laying down, he's thinking I'm asleep, so he's in the office with his friends. As he's in there talking to his friends, he admits to them, oh, yeah, me and such and such, we kissed um, the other night. You heard him. Heard him with my two ears. I heard him with your ears, Your Honor. I'm not playing. You actually think in some ways that Mrs. Sparks is projecting Oh, projecting for sure. So talk for to sure. me a little bit about that. Uh, it was another instant was a party that a friend of ours had. Um, it was a party bus that we was on. Mm -hmm. um, he sent a row above us and he accused me of turning around and catching me kissing her. This is a girl we talking about now. It's not even a guy. He t claims that he turned around and we locking lips. And I'm just like, what would I be like kissing, especially in your face? So I'm, now I'm real bold because I'm doing it and I know you right in front of me. So he addressed it. Uh, with me, and then I called her right in there, like, you know, he accusing us of cheating, I'm sorry, tongue tied, accusing us of cheating, uh, kissing in the back. And she was like, no, we didn't, like, and I'm like, right, that's what I'm trying to tell him, but he still, till today, will follow up and say that I kissed that girl. Mr. Spark? Your Honor, Your Honor. So, I, one, I know what I saw. I know exactly what I saw, and at that moment... You always see something. At that moment, you know when you catch somebody doing something and they see you see them? So he see me look back, he, so he looking at me like, what, what's wrong, what's wrong? So he got to, he felt guilty. So at that moment, I didn't address the situation because it wasn't the time or the place. So when we got by ourselves, I confronted him about the situation. Yeah, he did call her, and, and when he called her, she, she said everything he said. But do you think she's going to be like, oh, yeah, we was kissing, knowing he's in a relationship? No, she's not going to say that. Well, she so did. then... Um, I don't understand... <laughs> I want to be clear. You both were on the same bus. You were in different rows at the time. You allegedly saw this is part your partner kiss. kissing, I don't care if it's another man or another woman, but kissing somebody other than you. Yes. You did not stop the bus and turn up. No, I did not. You're a better man than me. Because <laughs> I'm going to let you know right now, that would not have happened had that been me. <sighs> yes. I'd have come down from row two and been in row one, and we'd have set that off. That's all I want to tell you. That doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, but, I, see, I was actually keeping my composure. But this is how, at first, when he told me, no, you made that up, you made that up, I was like, okay, you know what? Maybe I'm being delusional. So I got to make an excuse up for him. So I got to believe in what he was saying. So then, another, like, probably a week later, we are in our in the apartment. Uh, our, the bedroom was right here. The office is right here. 
So the rooms are connected. They're joined. So I'm in the room laying down. He's thinking I'm asleep. So he's in the office with his friends. As he's in there talking to his friends, he admits to them, oh, yeah, me and such and such, we kissed um, the other night. You heard him. Heard him with my two ears. I heard him with your ears, Your Honor. I'm not playing. He always hears and see stuff that and I've so, never did. So when or I said confronted him, him about that, because at that moment, now, this is when I turned up. Because now I'm in the comfort of my home. We ain't in public. We could say whatever we need to say. So I confront him. I'm like, so, so you told me you didn't kiss her, but I hear you bragging about it. Because at this point, you're bragging. You're bragging to your friends that you kissed this girl. Oh, no, you didn't just hear that. So I'm like, you telling me I didn't just hear what I heard. So now you're kind of trying to call me delusional. You're trying to make me seem like I'm just lying and making up stuff. It didn't happen. It didn't happen, never happened. He really, like, when I say delusional, he makes stuff up for but no reason. But why would he, he make stuff projects. up? Thank I know, you. I'm trying to figure that out. Why would he? Because he does the stuff that he accused me of. So that's Bisexual, the projection. That, that's, that's what I get from him. And everybody around us knows that. They, they, they tell him he's bisexual. And he's supposed to be a gay man. His family still thinks that we're like roommates. We nah, -uh, not after eight years. Eight years. They think we are roommates. They think I'm his friend that he just brings to every event. And we just live with each other. You've been hiding this for so long. Like, eight years, that's a long time to drag it out. OK, Mr. Sparks, now that is a big one. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Missed a show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. But wait a minute, you're supposed to be whoever you are. Just, you're just supposed to be truthful Truth. about it. That's all I'm... Yeah, I, but he I, lies about it. What do you mean he, he lies he, about he, it? He lies about him not like liking girls anymore. He's dated women in the past. He had baby scares, all types of stuff already. And then when we're around women, uh, example, he dated... Clearly, if they're baby scares, you do like women at least once. That, that, that was at one point in my life. Okay. Honor. That was at one point, okay. literally. So he's so stuck on me dating women in my past. He's so stuck on me having a baby scare. Mind you, I have literally been with him for eight years. I don't like women. So <laughs> you are 100% committed to, to this relationship? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mr. Clements, did you hear what Mr. Sparks just said? I, I heard him. Okay. Now, listen. We're either going to start at that, that level of I'm 100% committed, I'm 100% committed. That we either have to start there or we don't have a relationship. Yeah. That's it. Mr. Clements, yeah. are you 100% committed? Yes, Your Honor. And are you interested in being with somebody outside of your relationship? No. Mr. Sparks, are you 100% committed? Yes, Your Honor. Are you interested in being with somebody outside your relationship? No, Your Honor. Men or women? No. Okay, we are already at that level, okay? Let's move on to whether or not you can build on this relationship, okay? Mr. Clemens, your concern is a couple of things. The first thing has to do just with some toxicity that's going on in the relationship. I'd like to hear about that because that we can fix together. Mr. Uh, Clemens, what are you talking about? To start that attitude. Between the attitude and the mouth, I don't know which one is worse. Um, he can be mad at something somebody else did, but he will project that energy and put it on me. Like, I literally wake up and he got an attitude towards me. Um, there's some people when they have disagreements, they fight or they flight. Mm -hmm. You understand? Have you ever heard of the concept fight or flight? Y yes, Fight ma is, uh -huh. I'm gonna have a verbal altercation. Some people take it to a physical altercation, but it's man, bump, 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 confrontational. Mm -hmm. The flight person is the person that I go on over here, I gotta be quiet, or I drive off, I need to go take a drive, I need to calm down. Sometimes you're one way or the other, but the best relationships can talk it out mm -hmm. and then let everybody have a minute to, like, woo-saw, bring it back. If we can just work on that communication, that can be helpful. So, the big issue, the pink elephant in the room, sir, why do you think that Mr. Sparks is hiding you? Because I have not heard anything hidden here. His family still thinks that we're, like, roommates. We've nuh -uh, not after eight years. Eight years. They think we are roommates. They think I'm his friend that he just brings to every event. And we just live with each other. And it's just like, how are you, like, not telling them that you are in a relationship with me when you've been hiding this for so long? Like, eight years? That's a long time to drag it out. Okay, Mr. Sparks, now that is a big one. I do tell people he's my roommate. 
I'm not gonna lie to that. Um, but it's it's reasoning behind why I am the way I am and why I say that. One, I tried to come out to my family, and it it gave more of a you're confused. You're it's like it's just a phase you're going through. So when I tried to be myself, how long ago was this? Oh, years ago, years ago, around the time when I met him, when we started our relationship, okay. because he made me feel he made me feel very comfortable to even do that. Good for you. So when I did that, the response that I wanted, I didn't get. And I'm taking a risk with my family. And I try to explain that to him, and he don't understand. He's like, it's either me or them type of attitude. Like, well, it's it never gonna be me or them, because we want it to be all. But you have to be secure enough in yourself mm -hmm. to be who you are. I agree. And from everything that I see, you're very loving, wonderful young man. So I couldn't imagine a parent that wouldn't be proud of you. Okay, so I assume when you all go to family events, Mr. Clemens is with you. Yes. Are the, is your family accepting of Mr. Clemens? Do they like him? Yeah, they they love him, but they love him as my bro. Okay. He's my friend. I want to tell you a secret. Yes. Everybody know. Everybody know. Everybody know. <laughs> Everybody. Your auntie know. Your uncle Bobby know. All of them know. They all know. They've been knowing. And guess what? They will get used to it, and they will get comfortable, and it will be fine. Mm -hmm. That's it. Because you deserve to be happy and you deserve to stand in your own truth. Be who you are. Your family loves you just like you are. Trust me. And they know everything about you. Because if you really love somebody and if you're trying to build it, I can't imagine that family won't support you in that regard. If they don't, Give me their number. I'll call them. I promise you on that one. You need to have a conversation with them. Please. I will. I will, because I see before me two people who love each other. Yeah, I want marriage. I've been wanting marriage for t eight years. I told him first, I was going to propose to him. And I asked him, I, I didn't do it, but I asked him, like, if I was to pro propose to you, what would you say? And he said, I'll tell you no. And I'm like, no, we've been with each other for six years. Well, like, we're not, we're not emotionally, uh, we're not in the right state of mind to be in a marriage. Okay, cool. Step back. I tell him, stop calling me your husband. I'm your boyfriend. So, Your Honor, when I said I would have said no, he automatically assumed you don't love me. And it was not, that was not the case. We, we were not in a good place in our relationship. It was, it was the, from the insecurities on both, be at, on both of our ends. Correct. The jealousy, the finances, it was, everything was not aligned. And he just, he just assumed that I didn't love him no more. And that's not the case. I, I'm gonna always love him. I'm gonna always love him. Are y'all ready to actually move to the next level, or are you still I, in that I need to plan phase? I've been ready. Honestly, I, that's why we're here, Your Honor, because I want us to get to the next level. But we, what will it take to take it to the next level? Let's just come down the brass tacks. We have to be more responsible. We ha like be adults about certain things. Are you ready for premarital counseling? Yeah. I can do that. I suggested this a long time ago. No, you told and me. He to told me. For myself. Okay. Well, I I suggested we both get a therapist. One for me, one for him. Together. He told me, no, I don't need that. You need that. That's a you your problem. Okay. Well, I can tell you right now. The best part of premarital counseling is when you have individual sessions also. And gentlemen, Mr. Clemens, Mr. Sparks, yes, I sir. would be happy to offer you the ability to have some relationship counseling so that you all could explore what reasonable expectations are in a relationship and whether or not the two of you um, can take this to the next level. But you have to bring two whole human beings to the table. Are you ready to explore that, Mr. Clemens? I'm ready to explore it. Mr. Sparks, are you ready to explore it? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, because after this counseling, then you can have the discussion on whether or not you're ready to be each other's husband. And then also, that person, your counselor, can help you with navigating, um, talking to your family and getting them to accept how important this relationship is to you. With the court's offer, would you be willing to accept it, Mr. Sparks? Yes, Your Honor. With the court's offer, would you be accepting of it, Mr. Clements? Yes, Your Honor. Then that's exactly what we're going to do. I am rooting for the two of you. Don't disappoint me. 
Okay, Robert, I like to start my day off with a couple that can make it if they work Absolutely. at it. Absolutely, they were right at the finish line. You just needed a couple of twerks, you know, a little, uh -huh. some, some fine tuning. I actually think you mean tweaks. Tweaks, <laughs> <laughs> twerks. The last thing these two people need is some twerks. A couple of tweaks. <laughs>